Hello, everyone. My name is Daulet, and I would like to start with a quick question. You can raise your hands up. Um, so the question is, have you ever been to Florence, Italian city? Maybe some of you been there. Right, I see. Uh, what about San Francisco? All uh, right, cool. Uh, what about Paris, the capital of France? Cool. Uh, yes, I see so that some of you travel a lot, and this is great. You know, traveling broadens your mind, affects you in some way, changes your perspective. And this is great. This is awesome. But, you know, there are many people that do not travel that often, like me. Uh, you know, it's pretty expensive to visit other countries, to buy tickets, to visit other cultures. Uh, and uh, what if I told you that you can go to Florence right now and your trip will cost you just about $10? I know that sounds strange. Uh, and what if I told you that I've been to Florence personally and I spent just about $10 for the whole trip? And what's even crazier is that my flight the duration of my flight it was roughly 30 seconds. I know that's kind of strange and crazy. Uh, I've been to Florence uh, for one week. Uh, I was admiring the local architecture, uh, Italian people, uh, local music. Everything was great. Everything was pretty normal, except for one thing. It was all back in 1476. Yes, the year was 1476. And to answer all of your questions, I was in a video game. Yes, I was in a video game. I'm playing, I was playing video game. My name was Ezio. Uh, I was living my Italian life through the gamepad, headphones, TV screen. Uh, and I enjoyed everything. As I said before, I liked the architecture, you know, I admired the views of uh, cultural capital of Europe. Uh, jumped from rooftop to rooftop. You know, discovered secret pathways of Florence. Uh, everything was great. You know, with the press of a power button on my console, I transported from my world to Italy. And as I said before, the flight uh, duration was just about 30 seconds. The loading time was 30 seconds. Uh, games today uh, aren't movies when you can only see things. Games make you feel like you're the main character. You can do whatever you want. You can make any choice you want in a game. And what's even crazier is that in some games, your choice can affect the outcome. Like you're literally living another life. This is so cool. You know, Today, the line between fiction and reality it grows thinner and thinner. Did you know that the restorers of Notre Dame, uh, after the devastating fire, seriously considered uh, its representation in Assassin's Creed Unity in the game because of how accurate it was made in the game? Perhaps Oscar Wilde was right when he said that life imitates art far more than art imitates life. Games are brilliantly done today. Thousands of lines of code, billions of objects, soundtracks, unique plot, unique characters. You know, we talk about them with our friends in the break time. We talk about them, we write about them. We get addicted to games sometimes. We even fell in love, fall in love with some characters, which is crazy. We have only one life to live, but games allow us to live hundreds of different lives, and this is, this is just crazy. And now back to Florence. Uh, as you remember, I went to Florence in a game, and you may think that, yeah, that's cool. Uh, you've been in Florence, but this is just a game. This is nowhere near to reality, and you may be right. But one moment in my life proved that this is wrong. After 13 years, I went to Florence again, but this time in real life. I completely forgot everything about the game that 
I had this game about Florence uh, 13 years ago, and I was just happy about my upcoming trip. But the moment I went to the city center and saw the central cathedral, Cathedral Santa Maria del Fiore, I felt something weird. You know, I looked up, it was go gorgeous, big. I looked up and I, s I thought that I've seen it somewhere before. Right, I was standing there and recognizing every detail around me. I was looking at the buildings. I said to myself, yeah, yes, I I've seen it. Mom, I've seen it before. I was happy, I, I was feeling joy. Not because of my current trip, but because of the fact that I've been here before, but in the game, I felt joy, I felt tickling in my stomach, goosebumps on my skin. I felt like uh, Anton Ego felt when he tasted Ratatouille in the, in the movie. Do you remember that? Yeah, I felt the same. And at this point, I knew what I wanted to do in my life. I want someone to feel the same, you know? I want someone to feel these emotions. I knew that I wanted to make games, and I'm making games now. Um, I finished my computer academy, you know, I watched thousands of, hundreds of YouTube tutorials, how to make games and stuff. And after failures, unfinished projects, you know, when you're working on a project, but then losing interest in projects, you stop making them. And after some time, here it is, my first game. Yeah, it looks simple and, um, yeah, simple game. It's a clone of Atari's Pong, uh, a very old game. And after some time, I went from this to this to this. And me and my friends now, we develop something like this. You see, I'm making games because I want to share something odd about this world that I see. I want to tell the players different stories that pop up in my head. I want to create a unique piece of art that anyone in the world can play, can enjoy. And I just dream that one day a small kid at 2 a.m. in his basement will play my game and say, wow, this is, this is cool, you know? This is, this is what I want, and I want, I want you. I, I want you to create this unique things paintings, uh, music, songs, sculptures, animations, anything unique. So that when you will leave this world, your soul won't go away with you, but rather stay in the unique things that you have created. And I think that you shouldn't try to make yourself unique, but you should try to make something unique. Thank you.